Hey folks, Lemonade here, and today I get to show you the HyperX Haste 2 before it's officially out, and I'm going to look at how it stacks up against a few others, but let's get into it after this. Okay, so I'm going to put the specs right up here for everyone to see. Now I want to touch on a few things here before we get started. I bought this on eBay on the official HP store, but the listing has since been taken down. Seems like the employee whoever was in charge of that made the Haze 2 listing live earlier than expected. It had the wireless in black and there was a wired version in black or white. Now we saw this announced in CES just a few months back, but there has not been an official launch or marketing campaign yet for this as of at least the filming of this video. I'm assuming it has to be very soon since uh, the HP warehouse clearly has them in stock. And well, Tim the Tatman, the longtime HyperX brand ambassador, posted a picture of a giveaway coming up with this mouse. That said, the CES release mentioned a price point of about $80 for the wireless version, but the eBay listing had this listed for $90, so I'm not sure if that just was a placeholder or if they had to make some price adjustments, but we'll see on the soon official launch. That all said, I don't have the original Haste. It isn't a mouse I've ever tried, but it seems like the main complaint of that was the choice of a lesser sensor. Other than that, people seem to enjoy the build and the shape. But I think the main thing that most of you are coming here to watch this video for are, is this worth the price and what do I think? Well, I'll save you some time. It's not for me, but damn, the value for quality you get here is stellar, regardless if it's $80 or $90. All right, we're gonna knock out the packaging here real quick. Now inside the box, of course, you get a standard USB-C cable, nothing particularly special about it. It's paracorded, but there is no angled USB-C head. That would have been a nice touch. The dongle itself is this neat little puck design, so it does stand out amongst all the others out there. So if you have several mice, this is gonna be pretty easy to pick out. And on the back, you have this nice silicone pad, so it does hold onto your desk really well and doesn't move. You also get a set of extra PTFE feet. These are pretty good, but I would have liked to see a little bit more rounding on the edges. And you also get this really nice included grip tape. It has this uh, nice diamond pattern on it, and it's textured. And it's about as thin as core pad grip tape, which in my opinion is the best out there. So it doesn't take away from the overall shape. Now, both the grips and the extra skates are very nice to see, especially for the overall price. And again, I hope more and more manufacturers start including these goodies. So build quality overall feels exceptional. There is zero flex. It's very similar to the Harp Ace mouse that I reviewed recently. It's as rigid as can be. No rattling. The main clicks are tensioned nicely with very little uh, side to side play. Now we do have a few points of concern. First, you can activate the DPI switch if you grab it like this and just give it a light squeeze. You'll see the uh, RGB on the scroll wheel turn from this yellow to green when the DPI activates, as you can see there. So obviously you're not gonna be doing this normally, but if you move your mouse or toss it around or throw it or in a bag or something like that, it can activate that DPI button. And other than that, there are the below standard side buttons. Now the placement and sizing is actually pretty good, but they do have a lot of post travel. Really the most in any mouse I've tested recently, as you can see, just kind of really dig in to the shell itself. It's hard, kind of hard to see with this glossy black plastic, but they really do give in quite a bit 
into the shell. So if you are playing games like Fortnite or other games where you just have a lot of high side button usage, they're going to obviously work. They're just going to kind of feel a bit mushy and cheap. And if we're looking at the rocket jump ninja weight to size ratio, we're looking at 0.78 to 1 ratio. So it's definitely very optimal for its size and 60 grams in this smaller package works perfectly. That said, the weight is just a touch front heavy. Now, in terms of the sensor, it's using the current top end sensor, the 3395, like the Pulsar X2 and the Vaxi XE. So this is a big step up from the previous taste. And from what I graphed, it has a tight spread and it's very accurate on how it tracks updates and in terms of its frequency response. And based on the graphs, it also seems motion sync is enabled but there is no toggle for it in the software currently, so it would be nice to see that in a future firmware update. Now, in terms of the switches here, we have HyperX's new HyperX 100 million rated click switches. Yeah, we're not really sure what they are, to be honest. Now, previously, uh, HyperX has worked with TTC, specifically using the TTC Golds in the previous haste, so I wouldn't be surprised if they worked with TTC on some new switches. That said, they do feel a bit like opticals in that they're just slightly heavier weight and sharper slash like louder sounding. They also have a harsher bottom out than others. It kind of, you can feel it's like it's just a bit sharper. Like look, overall they aren't unusable or bad switches by any means, just not my personal preference over something like Spam Mobile Omrons or well-implemented Kale or just beautiful Juanos. All right, so the coating itself is this slightly textured plastic, similar to what we see on razors, but I think I do just prefer razors a little bit more if you were going to use this stock without grip tape. Regardless though, for my sweaty hands and my warm room, I just put on the grip tape, even on the razors, as you can see. Again, it's really nice to see quality grip tape in the box, and I'd recommend everyone just use it over the stock coating. Okay, so time for some comparisons as you can see. So this is where I found this to not necessarily be my favorite and why I probably won't be using this going forward. For reference, my hand size is 19 and a half by 10 centimeters and I do use fingertip grip on my mice. And some of you know that I do really like um, FK inspired shapes, especially small ones. I originally fell in love with the Viper V2 Pro and then the Model O minus. Recently, obviously you may have seen on my channel the Vaxi XE and the final mouse in small, the last legend. And see, all of these mice really put this one in a weird spot. One issue is just how flat it is on the sides, which is usually a good thing for fingertip grip, but the bigger issue is just how wide it is in this area, especially the grip area here. As you can see, it measures just a little over about 62 millimeters, which compared to these is actually quite a bit of a jump. All of these when measured are pretty much 60 millimeters or below. The final mouse is as low as 54 and a half millimeters in its grip width. The X2 Mini is about 57.8. And even the bigger guys like the Model O2 and Viper hit 58 and a half millimeters and 60 millimeters respectively. Now that two millimeter or more difference really does just make this feel kind of densely wide in comparison, especially for fingertip grip. And while it's short and not too tall, I just don't find it a better choice over any of these, especially the likes of the X2 Mini, Model O Minus, or the Final Mouse. So now on the flip side for claw or palm, well, yeah, even here it's a weird mouse. Now let's be real for a second. If you claw grip, I'd honestly say mice like Endgame Gears, XM2 Wii, uh, the Lamzu Atlantis here, or Pulsar's X2 in the medium, this is the mini, but the medium version are just way better choices for claw because they have those more dedicated rear humps and you just get better support whether you're aggressive uh, clawing or more of a 
relaxed claw. Now, can you claw this? Oh, for sure. And I think some people like the kind of FK style shape with the lower and steeper hump for that. And if you're going to choose this style of shape, I think a relaxed claw grip is going to work best specifically for the Haste 2. Now, aggressive claw for it just doesn't really work just because how flat it is. There's not really a lot of curvature to kind of get a dig and a hold into it. But then again, if you're looking for aggressive claw, really at that point and similar price point, I would just recommend the Ninja 2 Sora. It's just much more optimal for that. Now, if you have smaller hands and you're looking to palm this, I mean, it's going to work. It's not a bad choice either. Also, a quick note for folks who use 131 grip, like a lot of Apex players or just folks who use the scroll wheel a lot in game, um, the button shape here and the thinner scroll wheel just really just make it feel very cramped because it's kind of um, tapered here a little bit. It doesn't necessarily measure any thinner here, uh, but the way the buttons are designed in this area here just does taper and it's a bit more cramped than other mice like the Viper or the Model O2 or the XM2 Wii. All right, all right, so, so listen here. I, I don't wanna dog this thing or make it seem like it's just unusable or this is awful shape and it's the worst thing ever, but I just don't feel it really beats anything at least that I've tested with this shape. Now, if you love the previous haste, then you're gonna feel right at home with this with some seriously nice upgrades. But for anyone else with any of the other mice I mentioned, I'm not really thinking you're gaining much by switching from them to the haste. Overall, if you just say F it, I'm gonna buy this thing anyway, or maybe you're watching this video later, you've already picked one up and you just kinda wanted to see some reviewers thoughts on it, you picked a good mouse, don't worry. For about 80 bucks, it's really solid. You get a ton of value from the fit and finish of it, the internals, the box content, sensor performance, the whole nine. It just wouldn't be my number one recommendation to someone. Oh, and the software isn't dog water like Asus Armor Crate, so that's a big plus. And on that note, folks, all my socials are down below along with any affiliate links and discount codes. Of course, if you had a good time with me today, likes and subs are always appreciated. Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. But until the next Fresh Squeeze video, stay thirsty, folks.